This is what you need to turn your business into a rocket ship. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman. I talk about the world's most exciting sales, marketing, and business strategies so that both you and I can grow our businesses faster and better. Today, we're talking about why you need a business plan. But before we dive into this, don't forget to head over to my website, jtimmerman.com. I put out tons of free resources out there that you can use in your business, things like sales scripts and email copy and marketing strategies and checklists and all the things you need to organize your ops for sales and marketing inside your business. So head over to jtimmerman.com. But let's get into it. All right. Why do you need a business plan? Now, I'll be the first one to tell you that I'm not a big believer in the traditional business plans. Unless you need it to pitch financing and funding, uh, you're looking for investors or a bank loan, you need to have some sort of business plan and a pretty well thought out one and detailed one because they need to truly understand it. But if you're just working with angel investors and you're working bootstrapped to grow your own company, I don't believe in the traditional business plan because I think what it does is it over details things that could change very quickly. You know, when you're bootstrapping, you're much more scrappy. You're probably going to change your mind based on things that are coming your way, resources that come in or go out. And so having a strict business plan isn't quite as useful. So here's what I would turn your business plan into. I would turn it into a five pager that gives a general overview with one or two specific details for the sections that you then follow. And then everything else sort of halos around there and flexes based on what's going on with the business and, and things that you need to do. But there are sections that do need to have attention and do need to have some detail to act as a guiding document, a guiding light for you to step one foot in front of the other and grow your business. Okay, so the first thing you wanna make sure is that you have validation. Okay, the validation section of your business plan is making sure that you're putting out a product or a service that the market actually wants, and hopefully you have some sort of leverage, competitive advantage, a unique selling proposition that the rest of the market doesn't have, okay? So the validation period is making sure that you have something that people want. And one of the easiest ways to validate a particular product is to try to get early customers. It can be done in a variety of different ways. You can go to an event, show people a prototype, and simply have them sign up to be an early customer. It could be a landing page that you set up. If it's a digital product or an online product or your direct-to-consumer brand, and it's simply a landing page where they can sign up to get an early bird discount uh, or early sign-up discount or something like that. If it's a product that you truly can't really sell, uh, you can't prototype it, you can't, you can't sell it up front, people need to try it and test it, then at the very least, you can get people to sign up for when it does launch. So sign up via email address, you know, sign up to be on the wait list, things like that. All right. But this validation period is both in theory, so you write it into the business plan, but also in practice. So before you actually even detail out your business plan, I would get started on the validation period just to make sure it's worth the time that you're going to put in to this particular company. Okay, the next section of your business plan is how are you going to get those early sales? Again, like I said in the first section, getting early adopters before you even start your journey is the best possible scenario because you already have an audience that you're selling and talking to. Building your subscriber list, email subscriber list, possibly building a social media following if it's if you already have leverage and you're not spending a ton of money to get that following. So this would be people that already have a large online community. You're already a part of a large online community, either a Facebook group or a forum or a Reddit thread or a private mastermind, something like that, right? But how are you going to get your early sales? Are you going to invest in uh, Kickstarter campaigns, right? To, to launch your proof of concept and get some early financing and funding as well as your early brand awareness. Are you going to... Uh, partner with another large company so that they're your first client. Uh, a lot of manufacturing companies do this or, or manufacturing startups, right? Where they'll go and they'll manufacture a product for one large company. And that sort of first order acts as the first investment that's needed to then grow the company. So how are you going to get your early sales? Are you as the founder going to be cold emailing people? Are you going to be cold DMing people on social media? Are you going to partner with influencers who just want the product uh, and are going to promote your product just for a free product? 
So in this next section, you have to detail out how are you going to get your early sales, preferably pre-launch sales, for as little amount of money as possible. So you have your validation as the uh, the information that you need, the data that you need to say, yes, people want this. You have your early sales strategy as the way you're going to get your early funding and financing uh, to to pour back into the company and also a further validation uh, because you can use your early customers for feedback. They can give you feedback about the product and service that then you can use to improve your business. So detail out how you're going to get those early sales. Okay, the next section is funding. So some companies, you need to have upfront financing and funding before you even start. High tech companies, companies that uh, require large amounts of cloud server space for software, physical tech companies that have a lot of manufacturing requirements to actually build the systems and the products, you're going to need some early funding. You can't necessarily just bootstrap. With most direct-to-consumer companies, many people think I need to get funding in order to buy the early products, but I would argue in today's day and age, you can get more creative with pre-launch campaigns teasing the product and why it's amazing, get people to sign up as early buyers. You can even go and use Kickstarter, Indiegogo as your uh, crowdsourcing platform. But there still are companies that require a large amount of funding to get off the ground. For those companies uh, and those, those types of businesses, you've got to have a funding strategy. Are you going to take on debt? Because you've got a large audience in the validation period and you've got some early adopters that pre-ordered but you're gonna leverage debt because that's gonna be smart debt for growth. Are you gonna need seed capital? Are you gonna need angel investors to get you the money? All right, so you have to detail that out in the business plan and also what's your strategy for engaging them. You don't need early financing, you can just fund it with early sales and bootstrap. Then how are you going to fund the actual growth? And this is where you detail out your financial management. If you're gonna make uh, $10,000 a month in sales, that's what you're projecting, you know, how are you going to reallocate that $10,000 a month? 5,000 is going to be on your team. 2,000 is going to be in product. 1,000 is going to be on growth. And the rest is going to be savings, you know, whatever, something like that, right? So detail out how you're going to fund the growth of the company. And I cannot stress how important it is. Even if you don't need upfront financing, you don't need seed capital, you don't need angel investors to get it going. One thing that I wish I did my early career when I first started the agency, Good Monster, is I wish I made a more detailed plan for how I was going to spend the money that I was making. I was young, I was dumb, I didn't really know, understand you know, business financial concepts, and I sort of just figured out like, well, I, I want to make this much this week, so I'm going to pay myself this much, and whatever's left over, you know, I'm, I'm going to you know, put over here, we're going to buy some new camera equipment. I didn't really have a good concrete plan. So in this section of your business plan, detail out how you are going to use the money that you either get as an investment or how you're going to use the money that you make through sales. The next section I would focus on is something I call FFQQ. It is facilitation and follow through, quality and quantity. It's basically operations. And the goal here is to make sure you detail out who is going to do what and why it's going to work. It doesn't have to be crazy detailed, especially at the beginning, but how are you going to facilitate the growth of this company? How are you going to follow through or make sure people follow through with what they're hired to do? How are you going to ensure the quality of the product or the service? And how are you going to scale, hence quantity? How are you going to scale it up and get more clients or sell more products or get more customers? And again, this doesn't have to be super detailed. I would just put this into bullets, okay? So who is going to facilitate the operations and the different things that need to happen? And how are they going to stay accountable? Who is going to be responsible for the follow-through of those plans and operational systems? Who is going to be responsible for the quality of the product or service and the overall offering? And how are they going to stay accountable? And who is going to be responsible for the quantity, the scaling? The, num the increasing the number of products sold or the revenue increase or the number of clients or customers. So detail these out in bullet points and it can give you the majority of your initial operation structure. Okay, and the fifth and last section that I would put into this first business plan is the what if section uh, and or the exit strategy. All right, so this is where it's sort of the long term. It's, it's, it's both sides of the coin. What if hits the fan? What if the economy tanks? What if the industry gets disrupted in a way that's, you know, unavoidable? You know, what could happen to this business in one, two, three, four, five, ten years? 
So here is where you sort of write out all the concerns and roadblocks and potential ways that you're going to overcome them. And I would try to put yourself in an investor's shoes here. I would try to look at this section like you're trying to find all the reasons your company's going to break and then being real as to if it can be avoided. So put here the what if section. If the worst possible scenario happens, what are you going to do? And be smart about it. Like if the worst possible scenario happens, should you just close the company? Should you keep it going? Uh, and the other one is the exit strategy. So it kind of stems from the what if, right? So what if these things happen? The exit strategy is what do you want from this? Do you want to sell the company? Are you building this company to sell? Is this going to be a lifestyle business where you can keep it forever and grow it and you know kind of take a backseat to other people running it? So define what that exit strategy is. Uh, and this section will sort of be the cap on your business plan that allows you to then get started. And you have a long-term vision of the what ifs and the exit strategy, but then you have the details of the uh, the actual operations and the growth strategies built right into the business plan. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up and subscribe button if you find these videos valuable. And please share this with anybody you think might find it valuable. If you have a budding entrepreneur, a friend, or somebody in business that's looking for an edge, uh, forward this video to them. Hit that share button below. You can send it to them via text or email. Uh, and don't forget to head over to my website, grab those free resources, take a look at them. They're all free. They're templates. You can use them inside your company now for sales and marketing and business operations strategy, and hopefully you find them helpful. Thanks. And we'll see you in the next video.